In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art ever present and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come dwell in us. Cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. So, good evening, everyone. I guess we're getting to night now. But um, this is our fourth class in the uh, soul cleansing series that we're doing. Remember, our first class was on a brief overview and introduction to what confession is, why we confess. That second class was given to answering common objections to confession. Last week we talked about sin and we looked a little bit more deeply at sin than we normally um, probably do in our day-to-day lives to give us a greater understanding of things. And now, now that we've learned more deeply about sin and how it can get into our lives. We are going to look at how to prepare and self-examine ourselves for confession. So before we actually talk about preparing and uh, examining our conscience, I want to point out a few things that we should know first. Number one, we must first realize that repentance is turning from evil to good, unrighteousness to righteousness, the devil to God. This thought should be first in our mind to help inform us to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. And then as we begin our self-examination, this thought will help us take our sins seriously and help us look deeper within ourselves. If we truly want to turn away from our sins. And the second thing I want to uh, say before we actually jump into the topic tonight, is that repentance involves four aspects. Remember, I've talked about over and over again that repentance is the beginning, the middle, and the end of our life. It carries throughout our life, and confession in this sense is the sacramental part of, uh, of repentance. But this repentance involves four aspects. Contrition, confession, the loosing of sin or absolution, and satisfaction. So contrition is sorrow and perfect pain of heart which comes about in a person who on account of the sins committed disappointed God and transgressed His divine law. St. John Chrysostom says, Groan after you have sinned, not because you are to be punished, for this is nothing, but because you have offended your master, one so gentle, one so kind, one who loves you so much and longs for your salvation, as to have given even his son for you, on this account grown. And related to contrition is that of affliction, which is sorrow and imperfect pain of heart which comes about not because a person disappointed God by his sins, but because that person was deprived of divine grace and lost paradise and gained hell. We see from the definitions that affliction belongs to the imperfect, probably most of us, because it proceeds not out of love for God, but out of fear of punishment and out of love for our own selves. So we have contrition on the one heart, which is 
true sorrow and perfect pain of heart, not because we might get in trouble because we sinned, but because we offended God. God gave us commandment, we broke it. And then on the other hand, affliction, which is sorrow, but an imperfect pain of heart, not because we offended God, but because we might be punished for breaking the commandment. The second part of repentance, confession, which our whole series is talking about, real quickly, is the voluntary vocal articulation of one's evil deeds, words, and thoughts, which we'll talk more about next week when we talk about the do's and don'ts of confession. The loosing of sin, absolution is forgiveness of God offered to the penitent who confessed. We know this. And lastly, satisfaction is the fulfillment of the repentance after confession and after absolution, which we'll talk about also a little bit more next week and the week after when we talk about penances. And so, having those things kind of as a foundation and as a base, We have learned about sin, and now we want to prepare for confession. We want to examine ourselves, examine our conscience. We've finally come to ourselves, as the prodigal did, and we realize we need to go to confession. So obviously we are either at that contrition or affliction we have some kind of sorrow over our deeds, over our words, over our thoughts. We're in that first stage of repentance. And so after we realize, I need to go to confession, you know, because of this and this and this and this, and the first thing we need to do, hopefully it's already been done, but the first thing we need to do is that we need to find a tried and true spiritual father or confessor. So for most people in, in parishes, you know, this is normally the parish priest. It's normally um, someone safe to go to. And it's a good place to begin for most of the faithful. And most parish priests can get you started on the path of repentance. But for those who desire to go even deeper, to go even further in the spiritual life, to greater heights, this search for a spiritual father or a confessor will often lead them to a more highly experienced priest often a priest monk who can discern sins and thoughts and actions and everything to, to a far greater degree than I can or, you know, father so-and-so down the road or, you know, father so-and-so in the next town over. And so an easy way to understand this is that, like a lot of things, when we... Uh, we look at the medical world. So in the medical world, we have you know, family doctors, you know, general practitioners that you go to for your checkups. You know, you got a fever or something. You know, you're not feeling well, you check in with them. And that's okay most of the time. But every once in a while, you, know, you might have something that they realize something's wrong, but they can't treat you they need to send you off to a specialist. And so we have, you know, both are doctors, but one is more general. One can help you with uh, lots of different things on, you know, not as deeply, but one is far more advanced in their, you know, typically in their learning in the special, one special field, you know, whatever it is. 
Um, and so this is a good way to think about, you know, kind of this, um, this idea of a parish priest, you know, normal parish priest versus some kind of more advanced spiritual father. You know, one is good, the other one, you know, knows this stuff a little bit more, can help you a little bit more deeply. Um, so hopefully we found that person. We know who we're going to confess to. If we don't, oh, you can talk to your parish priest about the confession. If you don't trust your parish priest, which some people don't, and sometimes for good reason, um, you can talk to another priest, <laughs> trying to find a trusted priest that you can get in contact with to give you, a, you know, advice, places to uh, go to, to possibly uh, find someone else to confess to. There's lots of different options. One of the, the only option is not confessing, or the only non-option is not confessing. So we have our confessor, we have our spiritual father who we're going to go to. It's done. And now begins the first, or the actual uh, process of self-examination, of examining our conscience to prepare ourselves completely and fully to make a good confession when we go to confession after this. And so I've listed seven things that this self-examination involves. First, penitents, those who are preparing to confess, need to make time or various times available in their own lives to actually sit down and examine yourself. Once you have this time, secondly, we need to turn off all distractions. Get rid of our phone, get rid of the TV, get rid of the music. We need to be able to sit by ourselves quietly so that our conscience can talk to us and we can actually hear it. So first, actually make time to do this kind of hard work, self-examination. Second, once we've made the time, get rid of the distractions. Third, begin with prayer. So we have the time. It's nice and quiet. Somewhere probably in our house or, you know, could be outside, wherever. But begin with prayer. And my suggestion would be to start with the Trisagion, like most uh, you know, services and private prayers start with, and then go into Psalm 50, perfect uh, psalm for repentance. And then after Psalm 50, try to offer a prayer from your own heart for enlightenment on how to see your sins and to actually see your sins. You know, we, uh, we use the prayer books a lot. We love using the prayer books. They teach us how to pray. We can learn how the saints prayed by using the prayer books. But at the same time, we need to incorporate those words from the prayer books into our own words. We need to make them a part of our own prayer. So that's why I'm saying don't... I mean, you could find a nice prayer, I'm sure... I'm sure to help you um, examine yourself. But to make it more heartfelt, I thought that it would be better to, you know, make your own words known to God, your own thoughts known to God, and ask Him from your own um, desire to uh, show you the ways that you can see your sins. So number four, after we've done all this, we've prayed, we should sit down, and uh, 
we can, should consider all the sins we've committed in deed, word, and by coupling with thoughts since our last confession. We need to think about the times, the places, and people we've sinned with. There are normally, you know, a couple maybe bigger sins on our mind that are easy to figure out. But sit there calmly, quietly, and think about our last confession, what we've done, you know, obviously probably went to work, went home, went work to work, went to home, went to work, went home, went to work, a lot of that. Think about those, uh, maybe those other times or places where you, you, you know, broke that cycle a little bit. Think about what might have happened. It doesn't mean you sin, you know, in those times, but, you know, these are the places, the opportunities for sin. Think about how you drove from work to home and home to work, you know. So you want to let your mind just kind of wash over these, uh, that past, however long it's been since your last confession. And since we're so forgetful, and uh, we often, you know, aren't paying attention while we're doing whatever we're doing, and then we don't even think about it afterwards, and so when we sit down to recall it later, we don't even know what happened, you know. The fifth thing I want to suggest for self-examination is that after we've mentally gone through all of our conscience in this way, that... Use a confession guide to help you to jog your memory, to kind of walk you further through this self-examination. This helps us with things that we've forgotten. This helps us with things that we might not, might not even have thought were sins. This helps us to make sure that you know, we are doing the best we can to make a full and complete and good confession. So with that, afterwards, if you want, I printed out some confession guide. Um, this one is published by St. Anthony's Monastery. Um, and it just goes through, has, it asks you very, various questions about you and God, you and others, about yourself, and then for couples. I really like this guide. I use it, you know, every time I confess. Um, but there are other ones. I mean, there are in the little red prayer book, you know. It has one that's um, based on the Ten Commandments, and it goes through the Ten Commandments, you know, similar to what we went over last week. Um, I found, I mean, I googled online Orthodox Confession Guide, and I found one that was like 20 pages long with, uh, you know, it had multiple different ways. It had kind of something similar to what that one is, about you know, various questions about your relationships in your life. It had one, one uh, um, section on the Ten Commandments. It had another section on the Beatitudes. It had some other things, you know. So if you want to find one, very easy to go online, open your prayer book. Um, but they are um, invaluable in preparing for confession. We cannot make a good confession by simply just mentally going through everything in our lives that we've done since our last confession. And so... The sixth thing I wanted to point out is that while we're doing all this, we need to be writing them down. Again, with the memory thing and the forgetfulness, you know, um, we write them down so that when we finish, and then however, maybe a few days, a week, or whatever, till we actually go to confession, it doesn't uh, go somewhere else. So while we're doing all this, 
while we're going through doing a mental checklist of our conscience since our last confession, while we're going through the confession guide, writing everything down that we see. And we'll talk more, a little bit more about what that means and looks like next week. And lastly, the seventh thing is that having completed our self-examination, the examination of our conscience, and, uh, you know, and going through the guide and writing everything down, the last thing we need to do for um, preparing to actually go to confession, to actually going to say our sins, is that we need to have a resolve to never commit these sins again and to work towards killing them within ourselves before we go to confession. Saint Nicodemus the Athenite says, Just as hunters are not satisfied with merely finding a beast in the forest, but attempt through every means to also kill it, likewise, my fellow sinner, you should also not be satisfied with merely examining your conscience and with finding your sins, for this profits you little, but struggle by every means to kill your sins through the grief in your heart, namely through contrition and affliction. And in order to acquire contrition, consider how much you have wronged God through your sins. In order to also acquire affliction, consider how much you have wronged yourself through your sins. <clears throat> so what he's saying is that just because we know what our sins are doesn't mean anything if we don't actually want to get them out of us. If we don't actually, if we don't actually want to overcome them to stop doing them. And so that process begins even before we go to confession. Once we know what they are, we need to struggle to destroy them. And the last portion, he talks about, you know, acquiring contrition and affliction. So just, you know, we can have a little bit of both sometimes. Or sometimes maybe we can have none of neither, but we, you know, go to confession just because, you know, that's what we do. You know, last Thursday, when we, many of you went to the uh, pre-sanctified liturgy at uh, Holy Protection up in Pflugerville, you know, Father Moses, he made the announcement that, you know, in the Russian tradition, what they typically do is one confession, two. normally it's like a week, you get a, a week of communion, um, and then, you know, you, and then you go back to confession. So you're confessing once a week. You know, frequent confession is good, but we have to be careful that in that, we don't actually lose the sorrow of sins. We don't make it mechanical. You know, I go to confession so I can go to communion. You know, um, that's one of those instances where we can say that, you know, I just go to confession um, because that's what I'm supposed to do. So we want to, however often we go, and we should be, you know, we shouldn't wait too long. I mean, I'm not saying go every week. That would kill me as much as it, uh, <laughs> anything. Um, but I would do it if you wanted. Um, <laughs> but we need to, uh, you know, have the proper, you know, spiritual feelings. We need to cultivate those. Um, and even in an imperfect one, like he's saying, in affliction where it's just, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, be in trouble if I don't confess because I'm going to get punished, you know? We got to start somewhere, so um, even if we start there, you know we can start moving our way up. But uh, you know, if we're not, if we don't understand sin, like what we tried to do last week, we don't understand the importance of actually preparing and examining ourselves. We'll never really gain those spiritual feelings. 
And so with that, that's all I have for tonight.